before we start today's video, I would like to take a moment to say thanks to all my patrons. Thank you very much for sticking around and thanks for supporting me. It really helps me out a lot and I wouldn't be able to keep making these videos without you guys. So thank you so much. I would also like to take a moment to say special thanks to David and Richter for a tier free sub again this month. So thank you so much, you guys. In this video, we will add a quest feed to the game. A quest feed is a feed of text that will tell you your progress of the quest without having to open up the quest log to see how far you are. So if I would pick up some potions, it should write on the screen how many potions that I have. And of course, to stop when I'm done picking up all the potions and then it shows yeah, that the quest is complete. Besides that, we will also implement the fact that all the quest items will be handed over to the quest giver. So when I take the quest here and complete it, the quest items should of course also disappear from my inventory. The first thing we're going to do is to create the UI. So select your canvas, right click on it, select UI and write image. So this is going to be the box for containing all the messages. So let's rename this one to message feed. This is our message feed. And I would like to place it somewhere here. If I place it up here, it might go over the unit frame when I target an enemy. Um, and that's not what I'm interested in. Let's see if I do like that, you'll see that it actually covers that. And I don't want that. I want it to be below it so that we can see this text uh, no matter what we're doing, if we have something on target or not. So I'm going to remove the target again. Then I'll take the message feed and expand it somewhat downwards and make it a little wider. Just make sure it's centered and then remove the image. With that done, we can right click on the message feed, say UI and text. And then we can write something, potion and then one out of 10, just to have some reference to whatever we're writing in there. You can see it's not a real nice font, so I'm going to select my preferred font here. And I want to center, so I'm going to make sure that it's centered. Uh, actually center top. And it's way too far down, right? So we can maybe take it and move it up here and see what happens. And then I would like to select the message feed, add component, grid, layout group. And then I am going to say that the child alignment is upper center, like so. And let's try to take the text and change the color to something that is easy to see. For example, in my case, I would like um, yellow. That's what they have in World of Warcraft. I'm just going to go with that. You can also take blue or something. You can pick whatever. Just going to go with yellow. Then I will like to have some shadow on my text. Like so I don't know how does it look with outline. I'm not sure if it looks good. It's actually pretty OK. So shadow and outline. Just want to see how it looks in full screen. Uh, that's actually pretty good, I think. Um, might actually take the outline and make it totally dark so that fills out the colors. Yeah, so that's that's fine. P um, potion, yeah, with an R. Uh, let's try again. Write potion. Okay, so if I duplicate this, what happens then? Then it's going to go next to the other one. Well, we're not interested in that. We want them to be below each other. So select the message feed and make sure the constraint is set to a fixable, uh, fixed uh, column count to one. So if we duplicate now, they go below each other. However, the spacing is very big, right? So we can actually select the message feed and select the spacing Y and go make it negative until you feel like the text is so close to each other as you want it in your game. Mine would be minus 80, for example. I think that's fine. Then I'm going to leave the two of the text, select the text I have and call it message and drag it into my prefab folder so that I have it. Then I'm going to delete the message from the um, from this scene. So we only have our message feed. Okay, we can also make some folders here if you want to. Let's see here in spells just to clean this up a little. And then we're going to make a new folder called characters. We have our player and our enemy there. And then we have something all called questing. We can put all these in there actually. Okay. Okay. So when we have fixed our prefab folders, then we can move on to the coding because we can already we already have the message feed and we just need to put something in there. And where should we do that? Let's go to our scripts. And let's find the managers section and create a new one called message feed manager. 
So message feed manager is something you need to re reach everywhere in the game just to write a message on the screen. So let's just start by making this into a static message feed manager and call it my uh, call instance. And then again, we are creating a singleton, so we do like that. And we are setting the instance equal to get component or find up type message feed manager. And then we're renaming this one to my instance. And this is only if instance is null. And delete these. Okay, so now we have our singleton. The next thing we have to do is to make a function called write message. So it's a public function that writes a message. So it makes sense that we should tell it to take in a string, which is the message we want to put out. And then we need to instantiate a prefab. Okay, we already created the prefab. So let's just make a private game object here and call it message prefab. And let's serialize that so we can just set it in the inspector. With that done, we can go down here and say instantiate. And we want to instantiate the message prefab. And we want to put it as a child object of this transform because this one is going to be sitting on the message feed. So we can just put it as child object of that. And then we want to check the reference to it, game object. You can instantiate and then say geo dot get component text. We can't see the text, let's right click quick actions. Action that dot text equals our message. Okay, so let's see if that works before we do anything else. We have the message now, so go back here and select the message feed and Add this one. I was just gonna update. Give me a sec there. Add this there and the message prefab. We have the message feed. We didn't have text message. Yeah, prefabs. Um, requesting message right there. Okay, so we need to take the message and drop it there. And let's call this function somewhere. Where should we call it? Let's try to find our quest somewhere there. We have something called a um, collect objective. And inside the collect objective, we have update item count. So let's try to do it here first. Let's try to say quest, what's it called? Message feed manager dot my instance dot write message. What do we need to write? We need to write dot format, string format, and we need to write zero and one slash two and then zero is going to be item dot my title second one is going to be my current amount and my amount so just to sum up we're writing a message here um let's do it like this we are writing a message. We are using a string format, so it says, well, potion or whatever item it is. That's why we write zero, just to get item. We are writing how many potions out of how many. So um, the current amount slash the amount we need to the console. So this will write potions zero out of zero if we don't have any, for example. But it's going to be one out of how many. So let's see here. Um, not zero out of zero, for, for example. We never need zero, so let's try. I think I saved that. So if I'm not on the quest, nothing's gonna happen. Um, so if I delete these, and go back here, gather health potions, accept. And if I start getting potions, you'll see health potion one out of five, two out of five, three out of five, four out of five. Okay, you can see these are written on top of each other. Uh, so there's a few things we need to fix. First of all, these I don't delete ever. They just stays on the screen. So we need to make sure that, take the message feed here and I also wanna Oh no, that's not the message feed. That's going to be on the um, prefabs and the questing and the message. Yeah, here I want to say that um, horizontal overflow 
is just going to be overflow. So now the text is not going to be written below each other. Um, and I don't want to recast the target at all. So let's try here again. Now they're not going to be written on top of each other at least. Gather there. Oh, there. Now you can see now they're written in one line. So that's better. And so one problem is that I get this feed no matter how many I have. And they're not deleted. Let's try to delete them. That's very, very easy. We need to go back to um, the message feed manager. And here we simply say destroy EO. And then how many seconds? Let's say two seconds. Okay. So we'll destroy them after two seconds. So if we do that inside the message feed manager in the right message function, well, then we are going to have a, a message that is deleted. Let's try again. 105 and then it goes away so I can fill up the feed and they will disappear after a while you can adjust that time to one second one and a half or what you want uh, if you feel like it's too long you can also add fading to it if you want to so that it fades out when it's uh, gone that's just to create a code scene that fades it if you want to Kay. one other problem was the fact that it showed um, what it showed showed how many out of how many that's uh, when we have everything we don't need to keep telling the player that he gets more items if he is done with the quest right so one thing we can do to fix that is to go back to the quest find the collect objective and go to in here and say if my current amount is less or equal to my amount then we can take this if statement cut it and put it in there now it shouldn't show afterward after and we can also do like this actually copy this and paste it uh, let's let's wait with that actually sorry i was just thinking further because we don't need that message when we have them already it's only when we pick them up of course so we don't need that so see here gather health potions let's try one two three four five and when I get more, it doesn't show. So it only shows me until I am done collecting them. Okay. We also need to write that the quest is complete on the screen. And we can do that inside the quest script. Um, we don't have that open. Let's see if we can find it. Um, quests, quest script, there. And we have start and update. We don't need that. And inside the quest script here, we can go to our... Um, is complete function somewhere there it was okay um, right here we can write a new message saying quest um, feed oh. oh what message feed that's what we call it. message feed manager sorry my instant that write message and I am going to do a string that format again and here I am going to write the name of the quest and I'm going to write that it's complete after and let's just put this into quotes and then I would like my quest that title to be shown so it's going to write that whatever the quest is called for example gather health potions complete and it won't do that if it's not marked complete already so let's try to save I'm not sure if I managed to save. Let's see if I did. Um, and then right, gather health potions complete. I am not really happy with the way it's written. I feel like it should be all the way around. Um, um, because what I mean by that is the fact that when you get a new potion, for example, the new one is written in the bottom instead of the top. Um, you can see here, if I do like this, that one, two, three. I would like it the other way around so that we have it on top. If you want that as well, I think we might be able to do that by going to the message manager. And here we should be able to say geo dot set and transform. Set as first sibling maybe. I think it's gonna bring it to the top actually. So let's try. See if it if the order is reversed now. and yeah yeah so now the top 
one is the, always the newest message and complete is on top we of course also need to be able to do this with the kill quest so inside the quest script there in the bottom we have this one called the kill quest as well and the kill quest needs to be handled the same way um or kill objective sorry so we need to go in here and say um, quest info manager actually let's just go up here and copy this message feed manager not quest info but message feed and in here we will simply have to say instead of items to say character um, dot my type i think it's called my type there so now we should have a feed for our skeletons when we kill them let's try let's try to take the quest go kill the skeletons and i would like to kill this guy um and we'll take a fireball shoot him now she get one out of two or whatever it was yeah well, one out of one kill skills it's complete okay so now we also have that however there is one thing we need to fix a few things we need to fix uh, let's say i take the uh, gather health potion script uh, potion thing thing and i get these potions it's fine the quest is complete for me okay i take and go to him complete the quest i know these are not gone but say i deleted them the feed is still popping up so if I give more health potions, it just still shows me that I am I need to gather health potions and now complete the quest again, even though I'm not on it. So we also need to make sure that when we hand in a quest, we're done uh, tracking the quest. Because it makes no sense for us to keep tracking a quest we already completed. If we go to the quest giver window script, we have something called complete quest. If we have it somewhere, complete quest here. This one completes a quest for us. However, we are not making sure that when we complete a quest that it is actually, um, we, we make sure it doesn't exist anymore, but we don't unassign the events that are listening to if we pick up something. So let's just go down here and say for each um, collect objective, um, O in, let's just call it inside the selected quest, the one we're completing that my collect objectives and let's say inventory script that my instance that item count changed event we need to unassign it by saying mine is equal new item count changed event what do we need to unassign the o dot update item count so now we unassigned it this is the opposite of assigning something uh, i would also like to do the same here for our kill objectives my kill objectives and here I would like to unassign uh, all dot um, update kill count and it's like kill confirmed I guess what's called and it's dot kill confirmed no it's not on the inventory of course it's on on the game manager isn't it um so we need to write game manager dot instance dot kill confirm event there okay so now we're also unassigning the kill objectives it doesn't show anything different it's just there's no reason for us to keep tracking and keep firing off events um when we don't have the quest anymore so let's say we've done 200 quests well then if we didn't do this then we would track 200 events which are not um, very efficient so just let, let me, let's make sure that we don't track them anymore okay so now we unassigned the item count thingy let's try again with that done come on come on come on gather health potions it tracks fine now we have five we have completed it if i go to him complete the quest away these we don't get the feed and when i get more potions it doesn't show that i get more okay so now i'm actually done being on the quest the next step would be to make sure that we remove these when, when i go to him and hand it in the quest should uh, quest item should disappear from my inventory of course because as someone um asked me on on my uh, my discord and i totally forgot about it let's try to see you too last so i can see yeah uh, so nick he asked about this um 
is the way to remove the items from the inventory after handing in the quest. Um, and of course, this thing should be um, be in in the video. And I totally forgot about the fact that you need to hand in the items when you hand in a quest, of course. So this is an obvious obvious thing that we need to implement. So let's just do that. Um, the way that I have implemented it is a, is just to get all the items we need from the inventory and then I'm going to remove them afterwards. So we need to add something to our inventory script. In the inventory, we need to add a new function. We already added something a few um, videos ago, something called just uh, get item count here. Well, I am in need of creating a new function. So I need to make one that returns stack of items and it's just gonna go called get items. It needs to return a stack of items based on a number. So let's say we have we need five potions, for example, for our um, potion script, uh, potion quest, and we need to tell it that we need potions and we need a count. So let's say we need five potions, then we call this function and tell it it needs five five potions. Then we're going to create a stack of items that we need to occupy with all the uh, potions we found or all the items we find. So this one is actually going to look a lot like this up here. So what I would like to do is to go up to the get item count and copy everything from the for each and down to the end of the for each and go down here and paste it. So there's a difference here. Inside this if statement, we need to delete item count plus equals. And we need to make another for each. So for each item we have in our slot dot my item. So each item in the items. Then we need to say uh, items dot push item. So I only want a specific amount. If we have ten, I don't want ten. I only want five because that's what I'm asking for. So in the case that the items dot count is the same as the count that we're looking for, then we just return our items. And out here we return items as well. Okay. So let's just recreate a stack of items. Then we run through all our bags and every time we have a bag we look through all the slots. If one of the slots contains that item we want to look for then we add that item to the stack here and then we return it in the end. If we hit the count we need, for example if we already found five potions then we don't need to look through the rest of the inventory so we just return them. And where do we need to call this? Well we can go to our quest script and then find our Collect objectives. We need to create something new to our collect objectives. We need to create a new function called complete because when we complete a collect objective, we need to do something more. We need to make sure that it returns all the items. So we need to get all the items. So we can say stack item is equal to inventory script dot my instance dot get items. And then we need to say my type and the amount, my amount, how many. Not the current amount, just the uh, my amount, just to make sure. So we're getting all the items here. So this stack here will contain all the items that we need. Then we do it for each, and we run through all the items. And remember, each item has a function called remove that removes itself from the inventory. So we can simply say item dot remove here. So this will remove all the quest items or the ones we are using in this quest from the inventory. So where do we need to call complete? We need to call complete from within the quest giver window. And we actually need to do it right here. So after we've unassigned the event, I would like to say o.complete. Uh, o. O. Dot. Oh, that's, that's, sorry, that's the kill. We don't need to do it for the kill quest, we need to do it for the collective quest so o dot complete up here and save let's try and see what happens here we need to gather health potions we walk around we find a lot of potions we complete the quest let's say we have um, seven here then we go and we click complete and we remove five okay so we only took the amount we needed and now they're gone they don't exist in our inventory anymore so we actually took the items and handed them over to um, our, our quest giver. 
So that's it for this video. Sorry it was a little long. It seems like it's going to be a long one though. Um, but thank you so much for watching and thanks for all your support guys. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.